Served up fresh in 50 seconds. Adam's occasional humor and Drew's plethora of knowledge unleashed in 40 seconds. The world's dumbest callers can be heard coast to coast in 30 seconds. And life gets just a little bit better in only 20 seconds. Eight, seven, six. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew. I'm not modeling anymore for the two of you. Loveline. Yes, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, our guests are uh, Mandy and Sandy, the uh, Bentley twins. Ow! ow. Yeah, yeah did, a, did a double one there. Drew has uh, triplets himself, and he uh, yes. hopes uh, one day that they can do a uh, spread and playboy ow, themselves, ow, right? Ow. Two of them are male. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna go, yeah. go play girl because uh, all the girls love to look at play girl. No guys ever look at that magazine. Uh, they are uh, here tonight to uh, promote their uh, website, amongst other things, www.bentleytwins.com and .net. And um, I got to tell you, we were talking, my um, producer, oh, well, <laughs> I say producer, but uh, uh what, what do we call the person on this show? Doris who, uh, or Danielle? Whoever books the show. Doris. Uh, was talking about uh, booking somebody from Playboy uh, down the road uh, who does uh, their new uh, court show and uh, sex court show. I, I don't know. The, the, the title escapes me right now, but that's what I thought we were doing tonight. And then I walked in the front door uh, disheveled, tired, late, and disgruntled as I normally do. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, Hugh Hefner sitting on the sofa, <laughs> snuggled uh, nicely between Mandy and Sandy. And I uh, gave my usual uh, Hitler-esque wave. And grunt. I don't even wave. I don't even move my hand anymore. I just give a sort of heil. And I uh, was heading uh, for the bathroom where I do my best thinking. And then I thought, hey, wait a minute. That's Hugh Hefner on the sofa. I better stop. So uh, I stopped and uh, said hi. And uh, girls, uh, lean forward and uh, speak into those microphones and tell us uh, what we can find on this website and anything else I'm leaving out. Um, well, we did a... The cover and the pictorial in a pictorial in the May issue coming to newsstands April seventh. It's a ten page spread. And it's um, the website it has is also there's a Playboy website and then we have our own website and um, it just has um, pictures of us and kinda like bio stuff and like auction and stuff like that. And uh, I you know, I I'm glad that you guys are uh, doing it in the May issue because my birthday's in May. And for some reason and I don't know if you ever did this as a kid drew or as a teenager, but when you got hold of Playboys and did battle over uh, why your month was a better looking month. <laughs> I've heard this before. That's then, our birthday yeah, month too though. May yeah. what? Uh, May twenty seventh. Ooh, eighteenth. Oh, I'm eighteenth. I mean eighteenth. <laughs> The, 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 the point is, is I, I, I like when uh, teenage guys get into those sort of feudal battles. Oh, yeah, May's a lot hotter than July, you idiot. Look at her. She's a dog. Oh. Well, I, well, no, this is 1963. You know. Back in the day, right? The, the, the point is, is uh, I'm glad to have you uh, guys in here. And, and now, are you actually dating Hugh Hefner or are you escorting Hugh Hefner? Or does it make, is there a difference? Dating. You're dating? Yeah, we're all yeah? best friends. Best friends? Yeah. We're all but best is, friends there, is there, is there, is um, there, has it been consummated? You behave. Oh, my. <laughs> There's two of us. We'll come over there. Oh, that's, I'm And we praying. brought you security. Drew, if they come over here, you you leave and you put a goddamn chair in front of the door. <laughs> that's and why shut, he's sitting on our side. Shut the light, okay? And then uh, you go uh, you go into the uh, Lycus' uh, office and do the rest of the show <laughs> from an ISDN line or phone it in. Call the hotline number. So uh, you can, now, now how did, wow, I wish I could date one person <laughs> you, you, you know what i mean like hugh gets uh, twins and and the thing uh, that's uh, cool about hugh is he had a little uh, he has quite a resurgence i mean he was uh, there was always hugh well actually hugh's life would be uh, hugh the married man and then there was hugh the bachelor 
which uh, was, I don't know, 30 years after he uh, got divorced and all those great uh, swinging parties and everything. Mm -hmm. And then Hugh settles down again, and it's like, well, that's it. He's in. He's got a beautiful uh, young wife. He's got a couple of kids now. That's it. And then just when you think uh, you got Hugh figured out, <laughs> pow, the penis comes out of the pajamas again, and he's back. And I, I think uh, he's been an inspiration to, uh, to many a man. Definitely. What do you think, Drew? You want to yeah. comment on that? Yeah. He, he, looks, uh, he looks in great shape. He looks like uh, he could handle a couple of twins. Definitely. He looks fabulous. He's getting ready to turn 74 on April 9th. Oh, isn't yeah, it great party. being a guy? Isn't it great? You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just build yourself a small empire and look, pow. <laughs> Here's what you get, but I, I got to kiss uh, uh, Hugh's ass because uh, on the uh, on the man show, we've been trying to do something with Playboy. I have this uh, ingenious uh, bit to do with Playboy. A Playboy has a little problem about doing things that involve a bathroom setting. Oh, I wonder why. Well, I mean, come on. I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk to Hugh uh, off the air about this, but but on the air, it, uh, and hey, I'm looking at him through the glass there. I'm gonna, I'm, I need everyone to bear with me, but Hugh, here's what I, what I want to say. Many, many a man reads a Playboy on the can. You should write that down. And that, that <laughs> has, no, has nothing to do okay, Siddhartha. That has nothing to do with the content of the magazine. It's a it's a compliment. When a man is on the toilet, he has a limited amount of time in there. But he brings his best he, reading material in the can with him. That's really his 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 man time, his private time. Yes, this is when a man convenes with his genitalia and the bowl in uh, in, 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 in 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 if you're an atheist, this is your cathedral, the commode. And he sits there, and he has some of the mo some of the greatest thinking. I'm convinced is done when a man has his pants around his ankles that way, and is in a sort of uh, almost um, almost a Zen-like state. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you get you get a certain focus. There's no distractions. There's no phones ringing or televisions going around. You're in the toilet. And I had this great idea. Now listen to this, Drew. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell the joke, and and I know it's a good one. I was looking. Remember when we had uh, Caprice on the show yeah. a couple weeks? back yeah and I had this great idea where I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm looking at oh. the Playboy magazine and I see the I see Caprice in there and I'm falling in love and I'm talking to Caprice and lo and behold Caprice starts talking to me off the page this is all done in post obviously and I say uh, Caprice wow I can't believe you're talking to me and she says oh man you are hot that Jimmy Kimmel, he's a uh, steaming turd, but you, <laughs> you are hot, Adam. And I say, oh, man, we got to get together. And Capri says, when? And I say, well, how about now? And she says, done. And there's a big poof of smoke, and uh, there's Caprice in the bathroom with me. Then Caprice takes a couple of beats, waves her hand, gets disgusted, can't believe what's going on in there, and uh, walks out the walks out the door, slams it behind her, and storms down the hall. And I'm uh, we get the uh, we get the shot from up above, the crane shot, where I'm on the toilet yelling, "No!" Well, actually, hold on, "No, Caprice, come back!" And you know I'm lighting you've, a match. You you really created another defining moment <laughs> where where, it's, where the difference between the male and the female could not be more clear. These young ladies. Are looking at you like you're some sort of <laughs> alien from just just got landed here from outer space i, I actually think it's kind of funny it, is, of course but, it's funny but, but there's never been you, you really define that woman difference has, has come to me and and, and i've i've uh, ruined the bathroom so she's stormed I, I, up and you, men think that's funny you guys are allowed to laugh into the mics if no, you women, like women actually think that's disgusting you see all right but they're this actually is a, disgusted hugh what i'm saying is is this is a magazine for men i do the man show i know your core audience i have my thumb on squarely right. on the pulse of your readership and we can really move some product let's take some calls all right i, I can see this is going to take more more ass kissing uh, in person but uh, we'll get to the phones and uh try being nice maybe we'll help we'll plug oh drew did you hear that she said you weren't being nice <laughs> rachel yes 22 you're 22 what's up yeah okay this might be a stupid question but um i just got out of a two-year relationship with my my fiance and during this time i had a group of guy friends that were like um, in between 12, 10 and 12 people and we were really close but now that I've broken up my, with my boyfriend all that they can ever say to me is that they want to have sex with me and half of them have girlfriends and they know where I stand on that kind of thing but that's all that they constantly bring up that's all that they constantly try to get can, from can me Can you help me understand exactly the context in which that comes up? Give, give an example of where one of these guys brought this up Oh, geez, just Thursday um, I was hanging out at their house or watching wrestling 
And um, okay, strike one. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. It's like WWF. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, much they love that show. And I was sitting in between two of them, and one on one side was trying was like trying to caress my hand. The other one on the other side was like trying to put his hand on my thigh. And pretty soon, I'm just like I stood up, and then I gave them each hug so goodbye. And each of them whispered in my ear that they want to have sex with me, except mm. they said a different word. And these guys are supposed to be friends. Yeah, they have been like my good friends uh, for a long, long time. Uh, and every these guys, you want to ask what their careers are? Oh, I don't care. They're sitting home watching wrestling. Yeah, hey, well. Rachel, so don't hang out with them. Well, I'm just wondering if it's my per like if there's something with me, like th yes, it's yeah, you chose to hang out with these guys. No, it's your boobs. No, but it's something yes. with you. But it's that you chose to hang out with guys that would treat you like this. Okay, right. But like all like that's all i can find it's like listen you no. gotta hang around with gay guys <laughs> i'm serious they'll help you dress they'll uh, pick up the pieces when a man breaks your heart gay mandy am, am i right no i mean i think you guys are being a little hard on her don't make her take the brunt of it well I, we're just telling these guys are idiots don't hang well, out she, with the, it's the only thing she can change well the question i would have liked to have asked her is is she the only female in the room all right. Well, there you another, go. another. I mean, if if that is the case, another bad choice. You kind of know you're putting yourself in a precarious yeah. position if you are the only female in a room. Rachel. Yes. Were you by yourself with these guys? Yeah, because I didn't think that they would try anything. All right. Well, yeah, they're friends. Why can't uh, they but, be alone? Well, I mean, alone? if they've been hitting on her before, don't put yourself in a room with a bunch of guys watching wrestling. You know, where they're where they're rubbing around with each other and then expect them not to hit on you. It never like came on to me like that. It's like, okay. Well, just be very open with your feelings and let them know right now that you know you just wanted to basically just be a friend relationship. That it's not going to go any further than that. And if they really want to be friends with you, they'll stick it out. If they don't, you don't need a friend. Boundaries, like that. boundaries, boundaries. But but uh, what happened? How did your relationship yeah. end? Just quickly. All right. Um, my relationship with my boy. Friend? Yeah, your fiance. Uh, yeah, he cheated. He, um, I don't know. He, one day he just called me up and he said that he loved me. And then twelve hours later, he said that he didn't love me anymore and he didn't want to be in the relationship. Yeah, because he loves somebody else. All right. Well, true. Why do you got to twist the knife? Because that's what guys do. All right. That's what guys Listen, do. Men are evil. Everyone but uh, me, Drew, and Hugh. He's not. He doesn't have anybody else. He's he's gone for six months now in the military. Okay. And so hey, Rachel. You just got to find yourself some decent guys. Yeah. Really. Gay guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> Listen, I, I run into this all the time, especially if you're an attractive young woman. Most of those guys you think are your friends are your friends, but they would also like to nail you. All, with, of, them. all no, of them. Not all of them. No, wait, wait. No, no, no. Either. But, uh, Please. Point we throw I'm on a roll here, all right, damn go. it. All right, go. Thank you. We, uh, the girls and I have found some common ground, and you're going to louse it up. Now, quiet down. <laughs> Shut Drew's mic off. I've heard just about enough of him. And and not only for tonight, for the rest of the week. <laughs> you don't have to come in tomorrow night. Guys, when they have attractive girlfriends, and I hear this all the time, uh, friends, I should say, who are attractive, I hear this all the time, the women are surprised yeah. that after they break up with their boyfriend or one time when they agree to go camping or they're out drinking or they get into a jacuzzi, the guy makes a move. They are shocked by it. And let me tell you, you should not be shocked. This is what guys are interested in. And the fact that they're friends with you is, is neither here nor there. But the point you made before, which I think is reasonably accurate, which is that if somebody hangs out in the beginning to establish that friendship because right. of an attraction. How did you guys meet? How did you get together? He was probably interested in you. You had a boyfriend or you weren't interested in him. So he went for the long-term plan. He decided to stick it out. And you know what? It works sometimes. I mean, uh, that's why guys do it. Don't be surprised. And don't think they don't like you as a friend either. <laughs> you, you women, you do like one camp or the other, we can straddle the fence. Shelly. We can like you and boink you. Let's go on, Shelly. Shelly? Yeah. What's How do I know if I'm coming? Uh, I'll tell you. If you're asking, you probably aren't. Really? Yeah. That's not cool. Hmm. Yeah, why? You have a boyfriend? Well, yeah, I'm seeing this guy, and we were messing around the other night, and um, he it seemed as if he kind of hit the spot, but and he was asking me, are you coming, are you coming? And I was like, well, I guess, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> She's probably thinking about it too much. A lot of it's mental. Really? Well, it's, it's oh, mental women, in terms yeah. of relaxing, but it's also mental in terms of connecting with the other person, and if you're not real involved with him, if it is not a... a, a, a it's it's an intimate place that you have to know how to find, and if you're not there in that relationship, it's going to be difficult for you to function. Yeah, and listen, y that is uh, sex 101. You do not uh, yell, "Are you coming?" in the middle of someone trying to sort of <laughs> focus there. So intimacy plays a pretty key part for women. Yeah, more than men. 
Very much so. Are you kidding? A ton, yeah. Guys don't eat at all. I'm telling you, if I hooked a uh, vacuum device up to my penis, I could get something off during a funeral. <laughs> Even a family member. Or, or more importantly, a pet. Is this personal experience? Uh, I haven't e- tried it yet. Mm. But he has um, a plan. My grandfather was uh, cremated. We didn't have a uh, <laughs> funeral. But if uh, as soon as someone else in the family goes, I am going to give it a shot, Drew. That's good. I believe it would be good radio. Yeah, I'm proud of you. <laughs> all right, Shelly. Yeah. You didn't have an orgasm. Crap. But that's all right. You're 20. You're 20. You, lis- listen, let me talk to the uh, twins about this. Um, I know women change quite a bit from 18, 17, 16 to mid-twenties, to later twenties, to uh, early thirties. I, I don't know how old you guys are. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Are you? It's only going to get better. <laughs> I mean, it really is. I, I haven't met a woman, and I'm 35, and I have a lot of uh, female friends I've had open discussions with, I've known for many years. A lot of them, quite frankly, weren't that interested in sex at 17, 18, 19. Not, they not, had it. Yeah. They liked their boyfriends. They liked being intimate with their boyfriends. They liked their boyfriend being intimate with them. But if you just sort of distilled it down to the actual sex, eh, that was all right. Uh, then at 21, 22, it got a little better. 25, 26, better. Later 20s, even better. And by the time uh, they got into their uh, mid-30s, uh, look out. That was it. They'd hop on anything. And their views changed a little bit, too. They're like, you know, if they were single and some guy just wanted to get busy, that was all right. I mean, uh, they, they b- sort of became... More realistic. They more became realistic. more like what men think. Mm, more yes. realistic about what men... Well, they, yes, yeah. they realize they yeah. hate all men. Yeah. They're all evil. And uh, you might as well just yeah. uh, use them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but you guys are doing okay at 21, right? I mean, you, you enjoy sex? We're fine. Okay. Just checking. Huh? He's being nice to you, I can tell. Be careful. He won't, he won't... This is nice. He won't hurt you. Yes. I know he's being nice. He's, Amy? Yeah? You're 16. Okay. What's up? Um, nothing happened. I just wanted to talk to you. To me? Yeah. All right. I think you are so cute. You guys hear that? His voice is so sexy. That's right. His voice? Ah! My nasally drone. Oh. It's, it's an aphrodisiac for retarded women. You're like my idol. Thank you. You're welcome. I, Thank you. I listen, I've been listening to you forever. And, like, I've been calling for, like, the past two months. Uh-huh. And I've never gone to talk to you. Well, here we are. Oh, my gosh. What city do you live in? Los Angeles. All right. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, what, uh, what part of L.A. do you live in? I live in, um, around, like, Chevy Hills. Oh, yes. That's nice. It's an mm-hmm. upscale neighborhood. I could move out there. Amy, pretty nicely any, anything else? Uh, nope. Just want to say hello. Would but your uh, would your folks object if a older hairy gent uh, moved in with you? Maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Amy. Sure. When there did you your go. dad rape you? <laughs> oh, please. All right, Amy. Bye. Thank you for the praise. Uh, call back tomorrow night. Okay. And every night. <laughs> Bye. All right. Let's see here. Carl. Carl. Yes. Carl, you're uh, 21. You're on with uh, Mandy and Sandy. Hey, how's it going? They'd be the Bentley twins. Hey. A little uh, Playboy pictorial coming out uh, this May, and you can also find them on uh, www.bentleytwins.com and .net. You hear that, Hugh? That's a lot of plugging going on. <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> national that. radio show. All right, Carl, what's up? Hey, I'm, I'm uncircumcised. I'm probably one of the few men in the world that are uncircumcised. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. In, in fact, in the world, most men are not uncircumcised. Oh, really? Yeah, in this country. This is the only s- industrial country in the world where men get circumcised routinely. Oh. And even here, it's only around, uh, somewhere around 20% or not. All right. My Wait ab- a minute. Now. Yeah, I mean, now. you're born now. Yeah. Yeah, but his penis is 21 years old. Uh, all right. Born my penis in- is 14. I Yours know is? I'm 35, but I think my penis uh, was born about you're just 14 praying years ago. you grow another seven years. <laughs> I'm the thinking there's still some root. In there, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, it's got to make a move. <laughs> All right, my question is: I got a couple questions actually. Mm-hmm. One, if I had it, done, if I was got circumcised now, yeah, would it be painful? Yo, yeah, it would be. Yeah, it cause problems later. Why can't can they give him a general? Yeah, yeah, but it's a painful as com- as compared to had it been done after birth, it's a much more painful issue. Okay, but it, but it's commonly done. It's nothing you should shrink away from uh, in horror. It's it's not a big deal. Speaking of shrinking away, don't they have to take some medication to stop it from becoming erect for a while know? afterwards? Yeah, we talked. Oh, about I couldn't that. handle that very long. But 
Will it, the sperm count, does it lower your sperm count if you're uncircumcised? No. What, what do you, Carl, what's up with you? Carl, did, what, what, do you, what do you do for a living? Excuse me? You're not, you've got too much time on your hands. What, I what? have a lot of time on my Yeah, what are you doing for a living? I am a security guard. I am at work right now. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. It's, yeah. Where, but, where are you calling from? Cincinnati, Ohio. Wow. One thing we know about guys when they are totally preoccupied about their size and... and well, this, I mean, does it does it keep it from getting fully erect? If it doesn't do anything, doesn't do anything. Carl, yeah, you, you went to high school, right? Yeah, you I graduated. Took, you took health class. Yeah. All right, I'd like you uh, to go back to your uh, old school and kick your health teacher in the nuts for me, would you? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, because he's, uh, he failed you. <laughs> but the point something is, something fierce. He thinks his foreskin's going to lower his sperm count. Know, he won't right. be able to get an erection. He's going to shorten his but penis. One thing we know about men that are worried about their phallus is it's really a concern about their self-esteem. Yes. Right. And your worth as a person. And you need to get busy working on your career and your life and developing interests and things that make you feel good about yourself. And That's right. Fill your time with more productive occupa preoccupation. Yeah, you, you girls are only so interested in the penis size. Am I right? 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 That has a lot more to do with that. It's the person. That's right. I mean, look, Definitely. it's not the fact that the guy has a small or unusual penis that is going to be the deal breaker. It's the fact that he's a security guard. I mean, that's how women work. Mm -hmm. Whereas with guys, we don't care what woman, women do, especially if they're attractive, we're in. It's like, uh, what do you do? Uh, axe murder. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. How interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what are your hours? That's great. And uh, you have a 401k over there? No. Okay. Uh, can we make out? Uh, that's why uh, it, it is occupation. That's why I always, uh, Drew and I always laugh that, you know, male strippers, strippers always come out as something. An occupation. Hey, the guy's a cop. He's a fireman. He's a telephone repair guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's wearing cutoffs. His nuts are hanging out of the side of his shorts. His shirt's undone to hear his body shaved and stuff. But for that brief second, whoa, hey, he's come to fix the phone at the strip club. And whoa, his, oh, hey, his shirt's come off. This fireman, there must be a fire marshal coming in here. There must be too many women packed into this room. Whoa, look at that. Look at that hose. And it, it's so it's so funny that part of the uh, part of the turn on is that the guy's actually employed. Women, males watch female strippers. They're dressed as strippers. They don't have an occupation. It, well, they do. Stripper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. It's like, hey, why are you coming out with your clothes on? Couldn't you lean back there? The less the better. Right. I mean, uh, we're not interested in that. Once in a while, that once in a while they'll pull out the nurse thing. And that's all right. Guys can go for the nurse. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I was just I was just looking at a uh, porn movie uh, cover tonight, Drew, with the whole naughty nurses type of thing. Yeah. And I thought, uh, what really goes on in a hospital and what the porn industry has done with it are two totally different things. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why somebody picked the hospital as the place. You know, with the uh, naughty nurses. I'm going to have to give it's, you a sponge bath and candy strivers. There's been a million movies. A million skin flicks made about the hospital setting, but Drew, you've been in hospitals. Any of that go on? No, but the, uh, people have all kinds of issues about vulnerability and powerlessness, and that's ah. where that stuff gets acted out. Nice. All right, Mandy and Sandy are our guests tonight. They're the uh, Bentley Twins. They got themselves a, a website: www.bentleytwins.com and .net. You can uh, find them uh, coming up in the uh, May as my birthday issue. And uh, I get twins in my issue, so you know that makes me better than all the other guys than that were everybody, born. everybody, Adam. Well, not anybody. Not than the other guys that were born in May, but just all the other guys that were born in the other months. All right. All right. Other than May. Oh, so, by the way, we maybe talked to you about 20 questions, since I did 20 questions and you didn't. Oh, on, uh, oh, that's right. I was outraged. A uh, Playboy interviewed uh, Drew, did 20 questions uh, with Dr. Drew. It was a couple, a couple years, years ago, ago yeah. now, and uh, the guy threw me two. <laughs> he <laughs> he threw me two and a half questions. Want to know how tall I was and uh, <laughs> why I wasn't off the air, I think, was, <laughs> were, was his two questions. They're probably afraid of your answer. Uh, yeah, his third one was, uh, who did you blow to get the gig? I think that was uh, the third one. I, w I was outraged about right. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but ever since my uh, career surpassed yours, Drew, I haven't thought about it much. I've got to be honest with you. I'm a very big man. All right, we're going to take ourselves a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll speak to uh, Natalie. She's 16. She wants to know um, how to know if you got a yeast infection. Come on, Drew. Give me uh, something to work with here. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I see a good one on there. You see it? After this. Yeah. We'll be right back with more. Yep, 
It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. The uh, Bentley twins are our guests tonight. Mandy and Sandy are both uh, in here. Ow! Hugh, Ow! Hugh Hefner just uh, swung by to explain to the girls why farting was funny. <laughs> I'm surprised he hadn't given you that speech uh, months ago. Uh, it's always uh, one of the first speeches I give to my lady friends. Well, but that's uh, what moved us over. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's winning them over to you, Adam. Well, now that, I think now that Hugh gave uh, the big uh, brown light, <laughs> the big green light uh, for the fart humor, now I think the girls realize it's okay. Mm, and uh, and uh, I'm now uh, fast becoming their hero. <laughs> Natalie? Yeah? You're uh, 16? Yeah. Um, it's like not only like that... <laughs> That's not just a question, you know, if I have a yeast infection. It was, like, too long of a question. All right. May, let's, Go let's, right ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm just charging. I don't know if it's a yeast infection or an STD. Um, I Wait, only are you sexually active? Yeah, but just with one person. He's my boyfriend. And how and are you regularly active with him? Yeah. Yeah, and I've been just charging a lot, and I don't know. It smells like urine. I don't know. It has this really really nasty smell okay so at, at very minimum we, we would i would su suggest that you probably have a vaginitis, vaginitis okay which is a bacterial overgrowth in the vagina it doesn't necessarily mean it's an std though often it is mm -hmm. and nor does it mean that it's something that uh, get can have consequences not getting into the higher areas of the genital tract and infect the tubes put you at risk for cervical cancer that sort of thing it's probably not one of those kinds of infections but it is something that should be treated Okay. Should I go to the doctors or just get like... Yeah, the smell suggests it's probably not yeast, that it's probably something else, Gardnerella. Yeah, because it's really... Well, I don't mean to cut you off, Natalie, but uh, Drew? Yeah. Yeah, I got to masturbate uh, later. Later? Oh, you don't mean to talk about trichomonas anymore? Anyway. Yeah, the smell, the yeast, the discharge, uh -huh. it's all, you know, ching, ching, 30 <laughs> seconds here, 45 seconds there, it all adds up. I see. You know, I'm already up to uh, four minutes now with all this talk. You want to keep going? Try so, to get it to five. One of the things you can try, Natalie, is an over-the-counter yeast medicine if, if you want to get started with that, but then get into your gynecologist or a regular doctor and get this thing properly right. treated, okay? Thanks. All right. All uh, righty. We'll uh, speak to Jason. Jason? Hi. You're 18. What's up? I, was, uh, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yep. I was wondering what the dangers of the nitrous were. Nitrous oxide? Um, first of all, it's an anesthetic. And for me, if somebody's going to be uh, delivering general anesthesia, I want to have an anesthesiologist around, frankly, uh, myself. Yeah, you got so, bodies who can handle it. So they're, they're cardiac rhythm disturbances, sudden death, that kind of thing. People <laughs> fall down oftentimes and smash themselves up with it. And if you use it regularly, I've seen two... Uh, one case where a guy got psychotic, where he started thinking people were after him, and he, he developed a psychosis. And the other, a more characteristic syndrome, is a ascending polyneuropathy, where you lose motor function starting in your feet, and then it climbs up all the way to your neck, end up on a ventilator. But, but uh, eventually, but, it goes through your neck, out your head, and hops to the next guy, right, Drew? And you're fine? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Isn't that how that works? So it, it's a concern. It's a drug of abuse, not so much of addiction, though. Yeah, nobody gets addicted. People to don't this. get addicted to this drug. And, and, uh, there's uh, also a uh, characteristic to this drug, which is your teeth hurt. Oh, wait a minute. What? That's right. I was at the dentist. Oh. I was trying to right? uh, that's right. Jason? Oh. Yeah. I've uh, I've done this uh, myself, you know. Here's the in, problem. In the dentist chair, though, right? Yeah, no, I've done it outside the dentist yeah. chair, too, when I was younger. Jason? Yeah. yeah. let me tell you a couple of problems. First off, we had a band in here where a couple of the guys' friends, I think it was uh, Sugar Ray, a couple of the guys' friends. Oh, by the way, they're, they're playing in a, we're, we're having a special House of Blues with them for this website. Who's My website? website? Mine. No. Yes, Sugar You don't have a website. Sugar Ray's But I'll tell you who does have a website, the uh, Bentley Twins, www.bentleytwins.com. But it's not, up, it's not up right now. Won't be up for another week, right? Exactly. That's right. I'm going to handcuff myself to the, the uh, computer, but and I'm not leaving. Wait, I want to talk about this real quick. Cause we're well, doing wait, a, wait, let me, let right, me just... Finish. Listen, you whore. <laughs> Most important you, thing, you whore. It's getting catty Let, in here. Well, hold on. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to tell a story here. Go ahead. Drew's got to jump right on in with the plugs. Uh, I think it was Sugar Ray, and I think we talked to these guys about this. I think that uh, a couple of their friends were doing uh, nitrous in a in a cab of a truck, and they just you know fell asleep, kind of thing, which is easy to do because mm -hmm. the stuff puts you to sleep, and they just you leave the nitrous thing running, and you're asleep, and it just kills you. Yeah. Well, that's happened. Also, people have done it while they're swimming. They go to the bottom of the pool. That's it. Really? Yeah. Where oh, do you, yeah. you? How do you get the nitrous to the bottom? No, what do no. you mean? There, like, I, there were two guys sitting in inner tubes. This happened in Arcadia here locally. He was two guys were doing nitrous in a pool, sitting to they they went out, slipped through the tube, went to the bottom. That was it. Oh, they're unconscious. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, your folks are embarrassed. That happens. Hey, what happened to Tim? Uh, sucking on the nitrous in the inner tube and, uh, well. Not too safe. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Darwin at his best right there. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is, though, and I've seen this happen, is that people take a big uh, draw off this nitrous. They're standing in some guy's garage because uh, some guy swapped a tank from uh, some sort of, you know, medical uh, facility. Everyone's in the garage doing nitrous. Guy takes a big hit, falls, falls over, yeah. whacks his head yes. on a rake. Yes, yeah. that's common. Yeah, I mean, that, that happens all the time. Yep. Okay. Now, if you fell over and hit an inner tube, that'd be fine. See? Yeah, life's so funny that way. Lisa? Yeah? You're 16? Yes. What's up? I have a problem. I'm going through this major moral dilemma right now. I don't know if I should make out with my best guy friend because it was said a while ago, but I don't know. I just, my best friend likes him, and I didn't know that until today, and it's set for tomorrow. Wait, he, did you say he's your best guy friend? Yeah. Um, you say it's set for tomorrow? Yeah, like we have a date for tomorrow. A make out date? Yeah. I can get one of those. I need practice. I, I'm oh. trying to get new boyfriends and stuff. I haven't had action in two years. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm yeah. desperate, and I, he said he would teach me or whatever, so. Oh, Lisa. Hey, Drew, what do you say? We meet here early tomorrow night and get a little make-out rehearsal in, huh? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Pencil you in. Lisa? Yeah? You haven't gotten action in two years, but you're 16. Yeah, I know, but... I'm, I think oh. she's a zygote. So, yeah, I mean, it, were you were you having intercourse two years ago? No. What were you doing? I was just making out with people, and I liked it, and I just haven't gotten any more. Right. I'm a pretty good girl. I'm just... Yeah, but this guy's your friend. Do you want to screw around with that friendship? Well, she likes him. Oh. This is an excuse. She's rationalizing. Uh, uh. Don't you girls think? I mean, obviously she, she likes the guy. This it's is gonna not. Screw up their friendship yeah, it's going to mess the friendship up. But that's mm -hmm. fine. She likes him. Well, no. If she then you lose to keep friend. him as a friend. It's not, it's not worth, worth it. it. We have this what? thing, and it's... Well, who cares about the friend stuff? First off, you're 16. Hey, Drew, are you hanging out with anyone you knew at 16? No. Not me neither. They're all idiots. Here's what happens. You move away to college, or in my case, you stay, and they all move away to college, and you don't see each other after a while. That's fine. You should have a boyfriend. Forget about the friendship. Maybe he likes you. And on top of that, her best friend likes the guy. All right. What I want Lisa to admit is that she likes the guy. I don't like him, though. I Why would you be using him, considering him a candidate to make out with if you weren't interested in him? We're using each other. There's like a mutual... No, no, no. You don't want to admit it. Stick if you didn't like right? him, you wouldn't make out with him. I think he's attractive. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. There's lots of attractive guys out there. Always go with the girlfriend's rule. You know, well, friends always. Guys, there's, you know... For some reason, I just can't seem to snag a guy. Like, uh, for some reason, okay. my... Okay, hey, okay, Lisa, would you just admit to me that you have some interest in this guy? I find him attractive, that's it, though. All right, well, you find him physically attractive, and you like him as a person because you guys are friends. Yeah. All right, and I, I don't think you want to admit you have feelings for anybody, and that's what's made you take this two-year hiatus. There's something going on with you and guys. You don't want to get close to guys. Where's your dad? My dad is great. I, I Seriously, there's nothing wrong with him. I love him so much. Really? When is he paroled? <laughs> Where does he live? He lives in my house. We have a happy family. It might surprise you, but there are such things as those. All right. Why are you so bitter? I'm not bitter. <laughs> well, what's up? Why are you, why are you frightening men? Why were you making out uh, like uh, some gypsy girl at 14 and now you're 16? It's been two years and you, you, know, you want to you wanna use a guy as like a guinea pig to make out with so you can get your tongue back in kissing shape. Very inexpensive. Experience and yeah, she's no, right. no, 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 listen, uh, Drew. Oh, hold on a second. Let me yell at my partner. Sorry, you guys have to uh, be here for this. But, Drew, I don't know where your head's at. I think it's spinning off in some sort of www. land. This is a six year old girl, says this is a guy. He, she likes him as a friend. She's attracted to him. She wants to make out with him just so she could get some practice making out. I just Give get, me a break. Would I just you get, jump in here? No, I just get desperate from her. She's, she's in a panic that she's not going to be able to be with a guy. And she's really not into this guy, but he is the nearest thing. Really to, not into a guy she wants to gonna make out with. I think she's, she's trying a bit too hard. About it. She's yeah. trying too She's hard. panicked. No, she's absolutely in a panic. I refuse to believe this. Lisa? Yeah? Okay. Drew's right. Why? <laughs> Okay, what if you guys start making out and you enjoyed it? Then what? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I kind of talked to him about that. We, like, talk to each other every night. And he just kind of was like, well, I 
can come over to your house Thursday and Friday. Well, but don't you think there's a strong possibility that you two may start making out and that it may lead to something else that you may... No, 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 not at all. Well, how about this? Is it worth what? it to you to get practice to ruin your friendship with the girlfriend and to kind of make a little bit of weirdness between you and the guy? I don't think so. She doesn't know anything about the whole session thing, and I just found out about it today and totally threw me for a loop. Okay, I keep... Some, something's up with Lisa. Do you, at least you have any eating problems? No. No eating disorder or anything like that? Mm-mm. Okay. I'm a pretty normal person. Okay. All right. All right. All right, then that's it. No. I, I don't believe it. All right, Lisa. I don't believe you. I think you like him. You don't believe me. I don't think you want to admit that you have feelings for him because it scares you. It's, yes. and it's. I it's, believe you, Lisa. It, now, she's scared of him just like she was scared for the last two years but, of not getting yeah. near any guys. But, uh, Making hey, out uh, hot and heavy at 14 takes a two-year absence. She's scared of guys. <sighs> Yeah, 15 to 14. Oh, at 14? Right. Yeah, what yeah. is making out at 14? That's Girls just a bunch of confusion anyways. You don't think like that. You don't think of getting some at 14. I liked no. Barbies at 14. No. So you I made didn't... out with Barbies? I didn't no, like boys. We liked we were Barbies. Like, yeah, uh -huh. we didn't like, like boys until at all. we were like seniors in high school. Really? They were gross. Yeah. They talked about farting and stuff. They scared us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hate those guys. So immature. Drew, where's my ascot in a smoking jacket? <laughs> Uh, I, you know, uh, Hugh will be glad to know that I uh, do the show quite often in pajamas. Drew, please back me up this on show. this. Oh, you quite often. In fact, I didn't what's get up with you? well because I didn't go home tonight because uh. I was working all day and I came uh, straight out here. But I norm not the silk pajamas that uh, Hugh's been known to don. But sort but of like the street pajamas, sweatpants, the erection, the, gravy stain. <laughs> yeah. Picture those kind of pajamas. Yes, the working man's PJs. Larry, yeah, you're 17. Yeah, I wanted to ask the twins how they met Hef. Uh, actually, we met him at the Garden of Eden one night when um, we were out visiting friends here in Los Angeles because I live in Las Vegas and Mandy was living in Chicago at the time. And um, we were dancing together and he sent over Heather Koza, our Playmate of the Year, to ask if we would come and have a drink. And uh, <laughs> at first we said no. We were kind of just really interested in having a good time, just kind of, you know doing our own thing and uh, he was very persistent and he asked a second time and we figured well you know why the hell not it's a good story to tell your friends so we decided to go over and have a drink with him we sat yeah. down and um, it was just a little intimidating and he was a little aggressive so but he was a, a perfect gentleman well, wait a minute. Was he aggressive or was he a perfect well, gentleman? He invited us back to have a drink at the mansion. and this I'm sure it was purely innocent, but being from the Midwest and not really being into that whole scene, sure. we, we just gracefully declined. And I um, excused myself to use the ladies' room and tried to leave me there. And She, she said, said, not without I me. I said, you are not leaving me. So, so uh, we, we didn't lie. We just went we, to a different ladies' room. Right. So. We found the front door on the way out to the bathroom. Well, you showed him. No. no, and oh. then um, it wasn't even like that. It wasn't. Well, what to happened? Show. I mean, oh, we're from. Chicago. We were just very intimidated at first, you we know. Just, but, but how did he track you down then after that? He actually had, he had uh, people find us. Yeah, all he knew people find us. All he knew was Sandy and Mandy, and one lived in Las Vegas, and the other lived in Chicago, and that we both were college kids, and um, just people who talked to people who talked to people, and finally one night I was out at a, a club. Month, right? About a month later, and I heard people talking that he was looking for these twins, Sandy and Mandy, and I thought it was my friends just you know blowing smoke up my butt. And um, turned out to be true. And the next day was Sunday. The phone rang. I answered it, and he said, "Hi, darling, it's Hugh Hefner." And I thought it was my friend still playing the same joke. And I was like, "Oh yeah, I bet it is." And it turned out to be him. And we called Mandy on three-way, and she mm -hmm. said, uh, "There's somebody on the phone that wants to talk to you." And I'm like, "We're always, you know, calling each other, doing stupid stuff." So I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever. Who is it?" She said, "It's uh, Hugh Hefner." I said, "Yeah," and I'm the Queen of England, whatever, you know. And uh, turned out it was him. He said hello, and he was very polite and invited us to. Um, come out to the Midsummer Dreams party two years ago. And we, we came accepted. and it was all history. Yeah. You, you were in college when you met him? I'm uh -huh. still in college. Yeah. Where? where? UNLV. And I'm a business major. I just moved out to Los Angeles about a year ago, so I've taken a semester off. Wow. And, oh, man. And, and but let me just tell you something. If you ever try to get away, he'll find you. That's uh, a... <laughs> oh, we don't... Number, no, there's no one. bathroom There's passes. a running joke. No bathroom passes. There's, and uh, number two... I got two TV shows and a radio show. I've never been invited to one of these parties. Well, maybe if you're nice, <laughs> that'll change. He doesn't know I'm not nice. Or if you go blonde. Oh, no, he knew who you were. I said you're the guy from the man show. He goes, oh, that guy. <laughs> that guy. I've never been. You, you know, we've done things at the mansion. We've done. We had a man show. Uh, the original Loveline. An original launch party for Loveline before before Fox. Yeah, this Remember was that? way back when, yeah. like four years ago. We Five had years ago. Uh, we had a man show. 
uh, press party there, I think. We're doing a man show. Uh, I think we're shooting a wraparound sort of compilation show, but I've never been in the house. Hugh doesn't let me in the house. <laughs> Once in a while, I see him peeking out of a window with uh, what looks like a hunting rifle. <laughs> but I'm always I, I'm always standing out by the koi pond in the back or getting uh, dry humped by an ostrich or whatever he has running around <laughs> those grounds. I never actually get into the house. Well, and uh, whenever we have celebrities on this show, I always tell us about how great the mansion is and the PG party oh, was great and everything's great and here we are drew on love line we don't get invited to one of uh, hef's uh, many many parties well, well that's it most people don't get in the house usually the parties it's just you can go downstairs where the great hall is and that's where you dance and like that, the dining i don't area. even get in that part but you can't get upstairs no one gets upstairs i don't get i don't get near the staircase <laughs> that's what i'm saying i walk from the these, driveway these are out, out in the yard part i go i go yeah, around yeah, i stand part. by a bar that uh, is uh, built uh, like a barbecue it's got uh, it's, you know bricks and rocks in it i get drunk and then i walk back out and get in the car again that's no. what I do, and I, I chase a, I chase the birds around a little when I get drunk. They're Be nice. Your own party. <laughs> Be nice, and maybe that'll change. All right. Well, it's all going to change tonight. We're going to take ourselves a little break, and uh, we'll be back with uh, Manny and Sandy after this. Love line with Adam Carolla and Doctor Drew. One eight hundred love. One nine one. We'll be right back. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carroll. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. That's Sandy punching her microphone. Am I right? Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Forget about the fax number. Manny and Sandy are both here. They're twins. They're the Bentley twins. www.bentleytwins.com and .net. And it won't be up for another week. But write that down. And uh, one check week from today, check them out. Also, you can uh, check them out in the uh, May edition. May, we're all the uh, real good-looking chicks. That's always the hot issue, the May issue. Everybody. It's been in your honor all these years, <laughs> strangely right. enough. I, it has been dedicated to me every every year. Ashley? Yes, hi. All right, you're 17. What's up? Yes. Um, every time that I have intercourse with my boyfriend, it's like it hurts. And it's only it's like been really hurting like lately with like the past two days. A are you on any medication? No, I'm not. At what point does it hurt? Like when he just like sticks it in, and it yeah. feels okay when he like stays deep, but it just it like hurts when he like pulls out and stuff. And then I've like I I would go pee after it, and it just like burns really bad. Mm -hmm. Any discharge or anything like that later? Um, like I don't know. Like sometimes, yeah. There's is there is discharge actually. No, How I come think. you haven't seen a doctor about this? Huh? How come you haven't gone to see a doctor about this? Um, because I don't know. I just. I just figured it would go away. Okay. Well, hmm. it's not going to go away, and it's something the doctor definitely needs to look at, okay? Well, this hot shot's problem is he's moving around. You guys using a condom? When I have sex, I don't move. Just I just get still. in there, and then I fall asleep. Yeah, no wonder. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is happening. What it's you, moving. What are you guys doing for birth control? Um, I haven't gotten on it yet. All right. And you're not using a condom? No, we are. So it could be some kind of reaction to the condom, I suppose. And it's not so likely. Has he, has he had had any sort of uh, indiscretion without a condom? She doesn't know um, indiscretion. <laughs> yeah, we have, like, he, but he's never, like... No, 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 no. Drew, well, please, don't use grown-up words. Has he uh, banged around with anyone else? No, mm -hmm. no. No, but has he not used a condom on you occasionally? Well, yeah. I thought you meant, you said indiscretion. Yeah. I thought you meant... Uh, with the condom, the condom, he, with the, any imperfect use of the condom, he just Oh, I, I thought you meant he'd screwed around on her and I brought know, something back to the nest. Which he may have, too. Hey, Ashley? Yeah. Uh, what about lubrication? Yeah, we have. Using some of that stuff there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, look, you're, you're old enough to be sexually active, so you've got to take the medical responsibility associated with being sexually active. You can get cervical cancer, you can get infections. Do you think it's anything like that? I think it may well be an infection. That's a possibility, but it needs to be checked it's out. Not, do you think it'll be cervical cancer? Nope. Cervical, no. cervical cancer doesn't really have any symptoms to way late in the game. All right, but, but hold on. It, but if, if that's going to stop you from going to the gynecologist, then it may be cervical cancer. Yeah, it definitely is. But having beginning to have sex at an early age, having multiple partners, having HPV or warts, those are the things that put... What's that? 
first guy that I've ever met. I understand, but those are the things that put people at risk. So, uh-huh. so but look, if you're a section you've got to get a pap smear every year. That's that. And you should be getting on some birth control pill. All right, but listen. Or some kind of birth control. All right. All right. All right. You guys didn't like boys until you're seniors in uh, high school? No. Not really. No. Really? Oh, my God. Because guys were always so aggressive with us. We developed early, so it was like we were totally turned off by it. Oh, I see. Yeah, you you uh, got boobs and you look good and all that kind of stuff at a young age. So a lot of guys were coming on to you. And, and there you was got two turned of us, off. so guys are usually intrigued by pairs a little bit. So they were always kind of interested and inquisitive. So. Yeah, yeah. So we got uh, I don't want to burst your twin bubble, but you guys would do okay on your own, too. Well, you realize you ever just uh, split up? <laughs> yeah, we, we live in different states. For a few years. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's guys around that are interested. It's more fun when we're together, though. We like to play games. Yeah. yeah do you ever, uh, you ever do that uh, thing, you know, where you're dating one guy and he thinks you're dating her and she's dating you? And you, know, no. you ever do that swappy thing? No, but we confuse half all the time. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Um, let me explain what's going on with that. It's not that he's confused, it's that he doesn't care. No, he needs oh, he, he, he does just goes bring oh he just goes he needs, listen, he needs, I don't know. He, he just needs, bring it on. He needs cataract repair. He, <laughs> yeah, maybe he maybe knows it is cataract. Once he talks to us, it's just at first glance. No, he knows who you are. I'm just saying it doesn't matter. Just uh you're both beautiful. Well you're it's wrong. half the fun. Yeah. What? I listen, I, I don't mean to take this in a bad way. I just wouldn't care. You could uh, swap around your names, say you were someone different, wouldn't matter. I'd uh, I'd take you anyway. Yeah, that, that that's way to sweet talk a twin, Adam. I was just <laughs> way, way say, to go, you're pal. Definitely yeah. 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 <laughs> I look at you. He's as, coming uh, to the party. I can feel it. I'd now. give you one universal name. I'd call you uh, Smandy. Smandy. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. I'd call you uh, we Smandy. We got called that in high school. They just the call teachers. each one of you Smandy. No, they, the teachers would just say Smandy because they couldn't figure out which was which. Oh my and we'd god. And we answer. It was you must have given your dad fits. Uh, he was very extremely overprotective. Oh my God! Yeah. Could you imagine having these two running around in high school? I would. I, I'd chain you to the uh, radiator in the basement. <laughs> I wouldn't let you out of the house. Oh, we snuck out. Oh my we God! Oh my I God! I would. I wouldn't know what to she do. She was really bad. I took the heat for all. <laughs> I got boy crazy first. <laughs> oh my God! And I stayed home and and took the jumped heat. from bed to bed and ran from the bedroom and said, no, pretending I'm asleep, she was Mom, I'm the asleep. other. And then I'd run to my room. I'm asleep. I'm asleep. That was one of the good points. I could sneak out and she'd get checked first to make sure that she was in bed and then she'd go and run in my bed and pull the covers over and he'd think that I was sleeping. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna kill myself I, now. I remember high school <laughs> too, uh, putting a pillow and a blanket mm-hmm. under the cover so it looked like I was sleeping, mm-hmm. sneaking out the window. Climbing down the trellis, going into the yard, masturbating, and then climbing back into my bed. You remember that, Drew? Why would when you, go when in you the used yard? to do that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Why I wouldn't you just stay inside? No, nah, you're right. I should have just masturbated. And <laughs> he went to print. I feel like an idiot. He was now. having a rendezvous with his hand. <laughs> you just wanted right. to sneak out like everybody I else. I told my hand to meet me in the gazebo. Oh. Shh, my precious, don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full moon. <laughs> you can see my other hand. You guys should make friends. Okay. We're going to take a little break. Uh, Hugh is uh, the great Hugh Hefner is going to come in here and uh, hang out with us uh, after this. Yo, love line will be right back, homie. All right, we're going to take a, a quick 10-second timeout for a little uh, affiliate identification, and we'll be back with more of the show in just 10 seconds. This is Love Line on Radio Station. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Mandy and Sandy, the Bentley twins, have joined us tonight. You can uh, find them on their website, www.bentleytwins.com and oh, .net, oh. starting in uh, one week, mind you, and uh, also in the uh, May, upcoming May issue of Playboy. Uh, Hef has been kind enough to uh, come join us in the uh, studio now. And uh, I want to thank you for coming in, first off. Secondly, F invited me to his uh, pajama birthday party. That is going to be good. That is. And, and uh, by the way, F, the way he responded, I know it didn't look like much, but that is overt enthusiasm. That is like abject 
joy coming out of Adam. That hey, hey, hey all right. Well, I was, Boy. I was, no, I was overwhelmed. It's like when a uh, fan meets uh, their celebrity they've idolized for so many years. They, they always say something stupid, or they're sort of stunned, or they have that deer in the headlights thing. That's all that was. Hef, do not uh, mistake it for anything else. I was uh, shocked and pleased all at the same time, and truthfully, as a guy. Growing up in the San Fernando Valley and uh, looking at Playboys, not only looking at Playboys, but as I was uh, telling a friend of mine the other day, studying. not only studying, scouring houses for Playboys. When I used to babysit, I was always sure there, there's a Playboy in every house somewhere. The point is, is when you're 13 and you're babysitting, you have uh, about four and a half hours to find that Playboy. I would go through the house like a uh, SWAT team. And you know, like uh, you know, like when the ATF raids a house and they're looking, tearing things open. Yeah, I'd take a stiletto, I'd, you know, tearing open pillows, throwing feathers all over the place, pulling paintings off the wall and slashing them, looking everywhere. And uh, usually in the bathroom underneath the sink is where I'd find. Uh, I want you to know, I've coached half on radio. Find the Playboy, you have. The, he's got the head nod down. He's got everything, all the Pinsky. Yeah, he's got everything, including down. the Pinsky move where his uh, headset is uh, facing the wrong way. <laughs> there you go. You're doing a wonderful job yeah, coaching think there. Is his mic working? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a second. That, how's that going? Give that a little test there. Yeah, yeah he also knows the Dr. Drew school of uh, radio, which is head nodding. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, I want to thank you for the uh, invite, and uh, I guess uh, my question for you is, is how involved are you on the uh, daily operation of uh, the magazine and all the other, uh, the other uh, entities of uh, Playboy, the Empire? The magazine end and the, and the uh, creative end of the company, very active, every day. And uh, every month when they're uh, deciding on a Playmate or a pictorial, you're in there looking at the pictures. I'm the guy. He has the final say. Really? Yeah. Wow, that is uh, that's great. I know uh, your daughter Christy, right, uh, has uh, been doing a lot and has been doing a, a lot with that. But the, the buck still stops with you, right? Well, she runs the business end, and I run the the editorial and creative end. And uh, has there uh, ever been a playmate in uh, all the years? And uh, is it forty? How many how many years is it now? About forty two. 42 years, has there ever been a playmate that uh, got past you? I mean, one that was in that you didn't want in or that you were so so about or you got bullied into putting in? Well, I, you know, I, I passed on all of them, so I, you know, I approve on them, but some of them so anyone more than others. Anyone who's naked in that magazine has to go through you. Oh, uh, <laughs> certainly the pictures, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Right, <laughs> and half of them themselves, but but the pictures uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. I was uh, approached a couple of uh, yeah, about a year and a half ago, I think, to uh, pick my uh, favorite uh, playmate. You remember oh, that yeah, uh, yeah, crew yeah. in yeah. the back? I, I guess it's something something you guys started uh, some years ago. I, I don't believe it's too many years mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm. a, a celebrity, celebrity, or in my case, a pseudo celebrity picks out uh, the favorite uh, playmate mm -hmm. of your and puts him in there. I went with uh, Patty Farinelli because uh, she was a uh, big busted mm -hmm. Italian, and I, uh, I remember her from high school. And, uh, and Drew, we've spoken about this. I believe that uh, it never... There's something about Playboy, and especially the high school years, or the years between maybe 15 and 20, where those women are etched into your psyche Absolutely. and into your brain. It's a part of the rite of passage, I think, from adolescence into uh, but adulthood, think, and, you, and you hold those images forever. Yeah, it, it's really strange that uh, if I could get my hands on Patty Farinelli, <laughs> it would be the greatest day of my life. Yeah. But it's like the songs that you listen to back exactly there. You so. swear the best songs ever yeah. made, or, yeah. or the movies that you saw. You oh, swear yeah. the best movies mm -hmm. you've ever seen. It's it's all part of that uh, weird part. It's a part of your life where your brain is still a little bit soft. Yeah. And oh, this is the theme from Taboo Two. It's my favorite uh, porn movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> came out in probably 79 and uh that's etched in there too all right uh, i'm gonna attack the twins if you keep playing that so I'll stop that in. that's why i'm here oh uh, you got someone's got to get in between us all right half now you heard me begging on the air for this uh man show uh bit uh where uh where i'm looking at the playboy admiring the beautiful uh, women inside the Playboy, mm -hmm. fantasizing about like like every young man does about one day being 
with this playmate. Do you, do you have a, a great objection to this? We've been having some difficulty trying to work this out. I don't think it's a big problem in the concept. There may be a problem in terms of the, the environment. I think you were, you were playing it all out in the toilet. <laughs> and I know. There may have a little problem I, there. I know, and that's the problem that uh, the Playboy people have had with the bit. And you'll be glad to know, uh, half that your folks are doing their work. <laughs> <laughs> Man, are they it. doing their job. We talked to them 15 times. Uh, we they said, come out of the toilet. We had a yes, and then our a-hole legal department went and said, we have, I'm going to kill these Stone Stanley guys. You know, we, you know, you know how our company works. We had a guy from Playboy, and you're lucky because I can't remember his name because you probably fire him as soon as you got back. But he said, uh, listen, we love you guys over at the Man Show. We've done stuff with you guys before. This is great. Go right ahead. Do it. Use the Playboy. Have, knock yourselves out. It'll be fine. Then our legal department sent them a letter, which they do once in a while, which is basically, do you know what they're doing? <laughs> <laughs> then they get hold of the letter and go, oh, my God, this is what they're doing? And then they came back to us and said, uh, Hef yeah. doesn't like stuff to go on in the bathroom. Unacceptable. But 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 this is it's an homage, is what I'm saying. Hef. I understand. And and uh, there's no uh, there's no reaching for toilet paper or any of that kind of <laughs> stuff. I'm just uh, fantasizing in the bathroom about the young lady. She pops into the bathroom. My fantasy has come true, and then all of a sudden the uh, mood is broken by uh, by the uh, foul odor of the bathroom, and C she storms out. Could you be out. just changing your colostomy bag or something, Adam? No, I mean, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be a bathroom. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a very good. Good, very good get a alternative. Hospital getting prepped for some procedure. Yeah, but but Hugh, <laughs> ser seriously, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but no. it, it does. Is is it out of the question that we do this? Well, I think that that, that you have to, um, you know, you have to rework your plot a little bit. We don't mind. We don't mind those those uh, fantasy notions, but I think you have to. Uh, move away from the uh, toilet humor. But then that's the joke. The is toilet that's environment why she, and the toilet humor. She lands in the bathroom, and that's. All right. All what right. If you made it in like a bedroom and just made it like you know that he accidentally had passed gas or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you. Know, what do you think? <laughs> we may have to work on that too. <laughs> it's better than the bathroom. Well, we're not hearing any noises or anything. I'm just sort of uh, sitting there uh, passing the day, reading uh, the fine uh, publication Playboy. That's all. All right, all right. I, I can see uh, Hugh's uh, half. I should say is a fairly uh, tough nut to crack. I'll have to work on him a little more. I like a dark guy with a very big willy. That, oh, <laughs> no, who? Oh, that was Caprice. Yeah. Wow. Half, I bet you didn't know that about her. I guess not. <laughs> I, I don't think she mentioned that in her tutorial. You know, new things about Janet? Yeah. Hi, You're Janet. 15. What is up? Um, oh, I met my boyfriend a couple years ago. You? I'm sorry? I met my boyfriend a couple years ago. She met him? Yeah. Okay. We've been together for a year and a half, and well, we love each other very much. And apparently, like, see, I had a kind of a checkered past. What does that mean? Like, I was with other guys and I didn't tell him until just recently. What do you mean with them? Like, oh, I didn't have sex with them, but I, like, did things with them. While you were dating this guy? No, 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 no. no. Yeah, before. But I didn't tell him until just a couple, like, maybe two months ago. Yeah. That bother him? Yeah. That's a that, lot. That's that age. Yeah. How old is he now? What? How old is he now? He's 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect for that. Be bothered by this stuff. All right, so he, and he probably coaxed it out of you too, right? Mm. He wanted to know. Yeah, he, and like, well, I had told him that I hadn't done anything, yeah. and I lied to him, and then I told him that I did because I told him what happened. I told him like everything I did. Right. Yeah. And he kind of freaked out. Yeah. And um, like now he's he he's like. We're like practically destroyed our entire relationship yeah. now. But because listen, of that? he he was looking to freak out. Yeah, I mean, why else would he push so hard for this information? Well, because he knew I was lying to him. Yeah, but why does he care? You know what I'm saying? And I know he's saying, "Oh, it's not that you're with guys; it's that you lied." But that's a whole load of crap. Well, because like I was thinking that you know, if he loved me as much as he said he did, he would be able to get over it. That's correct. He'd forgive. But um, I forgive I what? I'm if it bothered right. him, he'd go yeah. over it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm afraid to lose him. Yeah, but... Well, of course, you're 15, and these relationships are very intense, but they essentially always come to a close. Well, it sounds like this one has run its course. It really does. Yeah, if you're with the same woman you were with when you were 15, or, or, no. Probably not. Different one? Okay. Janet, 
Yeah. All right. I, I know it's painful. I know you're confused. I know you're uh, caught in the midst of this. Um, it's one of these things where it sort of will take care of itself. If he loved you like he says he did, then he will get past this, and you guys will have a relationship. And if he can't get past it, it means he didn't love you well, the way he said he did. Just, uh, all right. God, true. That was good enough. Yeah. She bought that, didn't she? <laughs> Janet, you bought that, didn't you? All right. Uh, I, 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 know, I know how guys are at 17. I know the, the games they play, and I know uh, what they do to themselves. And we've all done it. You, <clears throat> I don't know what it is about guys. They get that, and it somehow goes away when you get older. Yeah, the, the testosterone he, levels start dropping. What's that? He's torturing himself right now. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. He's hurting her. But it's like, it's like when you have a loose tooth and it hurts, and you can't stop playing with it uh, with your tongue. You know what I mean? You keep screwing around with it, and he kept going at her for the information. I swear it is, it is the brain effect of testosterone that makes guys like that. It's a test territorial thing. Like they've got to know where their boundaries are and what they've got territory over, and then they right. can't handle it when they find out. Oh, thank God I'm now producing estrogen. <laughs> Life is... Uh, so it is easier, so much easier. It? it is so much easier. And Drew's been nicer to me. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a pheromone thing. <laughs> he smells it on me, especially when I'm around the period. Virginia? Yeah. You're 14. What's up? I'm not 14. Oh, I'm sorry. 19. I was looking the wrong way. You're 19. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had called him a while ago, and I talked to Drew. About a month ago, I talked to him. Um, I had woken up with the right side of my body numb. Right. Yeah, and a headache? Was that you? I have, I've had migraines in the past. Okay, we thought maybe this was a migraine thing. The emergency room told me it was stress. Okay. The neurologist that you told, you told me to see a neurologist. Yep. And they said it was a migraine. Migraine, good. Okay. Okay, um, but I still, that, this was back in October mm -hmm. um, that the incident happened, and I still feel, I still have a different sensation in the right side of my body. Well, migraines can actually, I don't want you to freak out about this, but it can, it can disturb brain function. The, it, it's basically a restriction of blood supply to that part of the brain that's, that is uh, responsible for feeling. That's, and when the blood comes back in, that's usually when the headache occurs. And that restrictive phenomenon can cause damage, can cause damage. Not, not such damage that you'd have difficulty thinking or reasoning or changing personality, but certainly you could have these sorts of symptoms you're describing. Hello? Oh, yeah. boy. Did you hear any of that? Hello? Hey, uh, Virginia? Yeah. Hey, put the phone on your good ear. Tell her that again. Because it just went, it went away. Okay, but it's just, it's part of the effects of migraine. And you do need to talk to your neurologist about this. It's what makes it so important that you control these migraineous phenomena. Okay, and okay. how do I do that? He, he, they didn't put you on any medication for it? No. She said it come back in four months, that she sees it all the time. That's right. But you've got to talk to her about the fact that there's persistent symptoms. And they may put you on something called a beta blocker or a calcium blocker to prevent headaches. They might give you... Imitrax or Zomig or uh, uh, Moxol. Yeah, but does that stuff kill the pain or does it actually stop the migraine? It changes the nature of the vest. Well, it changes the pain and it probably changes the vascular activity. So if there's uh, damage done by a severe migraine, it could be headed off by taking yes. this medication. Certain medicines, yes. And are you more apt to do damage to yourself if you have this at a younger age than in your 40s yeah. or something? Yeah. Yeah, and, and she should not be on the birth control pill. Should not be. That, this is, for me, the one circumstance where you would not put somebody on birth control pill. Why? Because it could make that a lot worse. The migraines yep. or, the, or the medication? The migraine. Jake? Yeah? You're 14. Yeah. What's up? Well, first I'd like to say, Adam, you rule. Thank you. You're the coolest. And Sandy and Mandy, you guys are hot. Thank you. Um, okay, so I... Well, okay, I'm What's half over here? Chop liver? <laughs> he's the man, right? Yeah, yeah, he's tight. He's okay. tight? He's <laughs> tight. So, okay. Hold on, half, that's good. <laughs> he knows, he's tight. That's like a 22 skidoo. <laughs> okay, I'm like... Oh, sorry, I was just kidding. I'm still going to the party, though, right? <laughs> I, listen, I know, we don't have to talk at the party. I, I know it's going to be embarrassing. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake, what is up? Okay, I'm... Bye. And I was hanging out with my girlfriend at our house, and she went out to the drugstore to pick up something for her dad. I don't remember. I think it was... Um, Vicodin. I don't know. It was toothpicks or something. I don't remember. But um, her and her cousin, her and me and her cousin, like, started messing around. He's a guy. And um, 
then she came home and we were sort of like you want to teach you have how to gamble what no i'm sure he's uh he doesn't have time for that but uh, jake yeah. What, what what's up with you? You're messing around with the cousin yeah, and then, while the girlfriend was uh, picking up okay, so at the pharmacy. She walked in. Yeah. And like, um, she, she like got pissed at me. Yeah. And um, so, well, she dumped me basically. Yeah. All right. Good. But then, like, two days later, I ca- I've called her um, other cousin, that cousin's sister, and it turns out that she it was it's actually her step cousin, and she's going out with yeah. him now, and. Oh, well. I don't know, like, what I should do. All right. Well, you 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 successfully found a family that was more screwed up than your own, <laughs> which is uh, probably not easy, but uh, you found the needle in the haystack, Jake. Now, listen to me, you screwball. I don't know uh, what's up with you. I don't know uh, what happened to you, but you're 14 years old, and uh, you're acting like a sailor on leave. <laughs> you understand? Yes. Now, what's up with you? What happened? What happened to you? Nothing. Now, what's going on with that family of yours? Nothing. Seriously, Jake, we know something's up. Now, what happened? I don't... Nothing that I know of. Huh? I don't know. Do you have any weird uncles? No. Come on. Tell us the truth. Well, okay, when I was, like, six, my, um, brother, who was, like, four years older than me, like, wanted me to give him, like, suck on his... All right. Now, who got to your brother? What? Who got at your brother, do you think? I don't know. But somebody obviously abused him, too. Was it was there physical abuse in the family? No. Just just the, the brother. Was your brother disturbed in other ways? Was he a behavior problem? N- not really. Just the, this one way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did this well, happen more than once? No. That one's in, like, n- not more than that. Yeah. Anything else? No. Nothing happened with peers or anything like that a little later? Eight, nine? Um, well, okay. I went on a camping trip. Oh, that's it. Uh, You don't even have to say any more. You go you, you, camping, everything, uh, all bets are off. How old were you? Like, were? You go camping, it's like uh, going to international waters. How old were you? It's, it's nothing but uh, sexual abuse going on in this campground. <laughs> okay. How, how old were you, Jake, at that point? I was 10. 10. Uh, so that's where it, it came back again, right? How old was the person that abused you? How old were they? 10 or so. 10, another 10-year-old. When you went camping with this person? Yeah. yeah. Was it a friend of yours? He, yeah, he was. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so listen, Jake, you've had a bunch of stuff happen to you, and, and it's kind of uh, it's bent your antenna a little bit. You're a little bit confused. You're acting out. Yeah. You're not quite sure what direction to go in. Yeah. You're going to get yourself into trouble, and you're going to get yourself more confused if you just keep sort of acting out. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think you need to slow down and get a little therapy or uh, read a book or uh, find Jesus Christ or uh, something like that. Okay. And uh, just slow down. Okay. I mean, maybe you're bi, maybe you're gay, maybe you're straight, maybe you're everything. But you're 14. And whatever's going you on now know. is from having been abused when you were younger. It's not a not a not a uh, accident that we knew that history was there. I mean, it's perfectly normal for you to be as curious as you are about you know what you want to do, but you're just making bad choices. Yes, yes, and a- everyone who calls this show that's in this uh, position thinks they're going to clear up the mystery if they just go out and sort of sample the uh, buffet. But uh, it doesn't work. It makes you more confused. It makes it worse. Hey, when you're 24, maybe, but at 14, it doesn't. Uh, no, that that's pathology. It doesn't 14. work. Yeah, Hugh, you uh, you knew you were heterosexual. Uh, I should say uh, half. He told me to call him half. His friends, <laughs> his friends. Well, he, call he him said half. his friends call him half at the beginning of the segment. Might be Hugh again. Oh, all right. Oh, I was just told. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know each other. We got to uh, fix uh, half's mic. Yeah, we're tight. All right, I'm going to work on uh, half during the break about. Uh, why the bathroom is funny. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back with uh, Hef and the Twins after this. Back once again with the- Love Line. Love Line. The band crawling Dr. Drew will be right back before you know it. Uh, 
right. Well, bad news. My car was stolen, so I got to ride home with half tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's tragic. Uh, Mandy and Sandy are both here, the uh, Bentley twins. They uh, can be found one week from today, by the way, on www.bentleytwins.com uh, and .net. Also, uh, you can find them in the uh, upcoming issue of uh, the May edition of uh, Playboy magazine. Hugh Hefner's are uh, also one of our guests tonight. I call him Hef because uh, we're now tight. I just uh, got myself a uh, phone call from uh, Daniel Kelson, the executive uh, producer of The Man Show, and uh, he reminded me to remind uh, Hef that we were working on shooting one of our fabulous Man Show uh, best of spectaculars. Uh, we're doing two. One we're doing in uh, Maui because uh, we can, and uh, the other one we would love to do at the Playboy Mansion sometime in May, and we would love it if uh, Hef uh, had a part in it as well just uh, made an appearance or a uh, cameo. It's basically, we just take all our best of uh, moments from uh, the last season, and then uh, Jimmy and I sit around and uh, reminisce and string them uh, together. Hef, does that sound out of the question? I think that certainly has a lot more possibilities than something in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't... I wouldn't even go to the bathroom unless... I would go uh, right out in the yard. And look, Drew... <laughs> Heffy, you got to work those cans out. Yeah, you two share this mic. Oh, is that mic still not work right? Oh, that's what I love about this dump, Westwood, too. Uh, Heff, let me ask you. Uh, I know the uh, the twins are originally from Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. and, Joliet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Uh, I know you were based in Chicago and all that. And I just sort of assumed you were from Chicago. But where are I you am. from? No. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born and raised. Oh, it is? Chicago. I'm a Chicago boy. Oh, God. Yeah. We're just uh, telling the twins how much uh, we love Chicago ourselves. Yeah. Hey, do you, do you it, get back there a lot? Not a lot, but it's, uh, you know, it's a very good town. We're going back and soon. A, yeah. Does and the, we are going back. Yeah. Does uh, gonna, Playboy have uh, holdings in Chicago as well? I mean, is there a, a Chicago office? That's and, our headquarters. Yeah. Oh, I, no, I thought... The Playboy headquarters is still in Chicago. Oh, I thought everyone had uh, picked up and moved in the big uh, building up on Sunset, I always well, thought. Well, we have... Uh, we have offices in New York and, and Los Angeles, but headquarters is Chicago. Have, how could I get my uh, hands <laughs> on some of those old, uh, you know, like I said, like we talked about earlier, for, for, for me, my Playboy uh, wheelhouse was probably 79 through maybe, you know, 84. Those were the, those were the salad days. <laughs> More like the salad dressing uh, days, actually, <laughs> A little creamy ranch, but those were my years for Playboy. Yeah. And if I could get my, puberty. if I could get my hands on uh, some of those old uh, Playmate, if I could get my penis, thank you, <laughs> on some of those old Playmate uh, videos from uh, that era, I would go berserk. Yeah. I, I really would. I would. I would have a. There would be a party in my underpants, and it would. Might, well, might not. It'd be like Mardi Gras. In there. I'd, uh, every time I drop my pants, you'd hear cheering and confetti uh, flying around. Where do I get my hands on those things? Because you know, once in a while I go to a video store and I see Playboy calendar, you know, video calendar yeah. and that kind of stuff. But it never goes back that far. I don't. Well, I think that the video did, uh, didn't begin until the early 80s or the very late 70s. Right. I think, uh, you know. I'm saying I got to get a hold of those. I, I got to get well, like 79 and 80 and 81. How do I get something like that? Well, you check through, uh, you know, uh, the Playboy you, store on, on Playboy uh, dot com. Oh, really? Uh, That's a computer. Or the catalog. Yeah, and uh, uh, Playboy the collectibles computer. are, you know, Here's what I'm a asking, big, Hank. growing thing. What do you got in the car? <laughs> what do I got in the car? I mean, have anything in the car, something rolling around the trunk, Patty Farinelli. I, I don't mean herself, but I mean any any pornography uh, any, out in the I, car, I, any, any I anything I can look at? I stuff in here with me. Oh, this is great. Don't, yes. No, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, ladies. I, but uh, it, no, no old stuff uh, floating around. No, in the back Adam, the, Adam, nothing is better than the VCR. No. unfortunately, <laughs> the reality doesn't compare. Yeah, you guys are great. Yeah, it's rewind and fast forward. You guys <laughs> and your are, favorite parts? You guys are solid, but it's just not the real thing. There's no mute button. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's no slow motion. Oh. All right, I'm gonna get. So if I go on. Uh, 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 on the website of playboy.com mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. can uh, you, one could order like archival things yes there was a, there's a uh, portion of the playboy website that is uh, related to uh, catalog stuff uh, from the past and there's also a section where uh, uh, playboy fans trade material and mm -hmm. sell material collectors yeah a whole uh, there's a whole collectible 
Playboy collectible thing. Well, on one hand, up. I'd be really happy to get my hands on something like that. On the other hand, um, I wouldn't trust a man who traded away a Patty Fernelli video. You know what I'm saying? I might take a swing at him. I'd wonder what was <laughs> what was up with him. All right, we'll uh, hop back uh, on the phones and speak to uh, Leon, who's uh, 19. Leon? Hi, everybody. Yeah, there's nobody named Leon anymore. Actually, that's true, except for Leon Trotsky. What's going on, Leon? Uh, Dr. Drew, I've been having tremors. I, I think it's in the middle of the street one day, I was just walking like down the street one day, and I was going to school, and uh, I just had these incredible tremors, and, and, and I saw red. And my retina, I could see like the you know like the tree of the veins inside my retina. Wow, interesting. Yeah, and uh, and uh, black these like black spots were coming out of like the sky, and they were raining down on me. And then I woke up and I was like looking upwards at the sky. That's what it'd be like for me if I could get my hands on one of those old videos. So you you passed out. I basically passed out. Yes. Did you have a seizure? Uh, no, I I don't remember having a seizure. But bystanders said that I was uh, that I was staggering, and then I fell to the ground. Are you taking drugs? Yeah. What are you taking? Most of my life. Uh, methamphetamines. Oh, gosh. Well, there you all, go. All bets are off here. It could have been a seizure. It could have been a stroke. And basically, I have a library, an archive of Playboy, and I'd just like to say I am humbled to be in the presence of greatness. Really? Mr. Hefner. It, oh. It, Leo, you, you got to deal with your addiction, pal. The, 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 yeah. the, this is how... I love your work. All right, but listen, screwball. Okay. Could have been, could have been a rhythm disturbance from the... A heart rhythm disturbance. I love your work, too, uh, Dr. Drew. Hey, I mean, I, <laughs> stay with me, pal. You know, I mean, hang on. on hold. Okay. You keep talking, Joe. Could have been heart rhythm disturbance. Could have been a small stroke. Could have been a seizure. These are all things that can kill you related to speed use. Methamphetamine is a very tough drug to stop. You've got to get into some treatment. Hold on a second. I'm just playing an um, angle here. He's still talking. Hey, Leon, listen. Uh, I want you to get help. I want you to go into rehab. I want you to get off the meth. Okay, what would you but, 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 but listen. Okay, you uh, hold on. Listen to me. Okay, I'll listen. 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 If something should happen to you, can I have uh, the Playboy stuff? Huh? Well, yeah. I've, I've all right. All right. That's all I needed to get to. Oh, man. All right. Listen, Leon, uh, speed is the, the ugliest of drugs. Uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm a pretty liberal guy. I don't mind uh, people doing certain things. Guy wants to smoke a little weed on his, uh, on his own time. That's uh, his business or have a drink or whatever the hell he wants to do. But uh, I'm telling you, speed is evil. Do not get involved with that if you're listening. All right. Even if you're not listening. Steve? Hey, what's up? You're uh, 18. Yep. What's up? I just wanted to talk to you, tell him how, what a great fan I am. I think he's a great man. Well, thank you. Yeah, and uh, actually I was wondering what it's like to have three girlfriends. Very nice. <laughs> hey, uh, what do you expect? A hell? <laughs> it's like uh, having a sharp uh, steel prods uh, rammed into your liver. What, what do you think it's like, Steve? Uh, I was sick. Wonder, actually, uh, hoping for some more detail. <laughs> well, I think we're we're best friends, and what makes it very 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 special is not is not the number. It's it's um, connection. Yes. And people are making it very complex. Outside. Just imagine being around three of the people that you love the most. That's just everyone's correct. having a great time, yes. enjoying life, being. 21 being, for him, 21 for the second <laughs> time, you know, we're all just having a great 21. time. That's right. Oh, There's yeah, no yeah, juice yeah. to it. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I just think you're a very lucky man. I am a very lucky man. Yeah. Well, he's much, man. much blessed. He doesn't have that much to do with luck, Steve. The man's worked hard. He's uh, built himself a uh, empire. Very and very uh, now he's, uh, oh, yes. And listen, <laughs> good looking, too. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, I, I, I really, uh, I'm not uh, normally sexually drawn to men. <laughs> You're trying anything, uh, aren't you? Seats? <laughs> Do you trade seats? I'm that was a big breakthrough here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I, I hang around a lot of guys that uh, they're not gay, and uh, they would probably make fun of me if uh, that was the direction I went. But if I told them it was with half, they'd probably go, "Okay, all right, yeah. okay, all right." <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a certain strategy there. You get, you know, yes, I. <laughs> you get to live in the house. Yeah? I think I can see through that. Uh huh. And the grotto. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, just uh, a little maintenance with a half. Uh, yeah, that's good. You get to go to the PJ party. Seriously, uh, half on those PJ parties, I, it just popped in my head. I, I know this sounds like a joke question, but I'm really deadly serious about this. Guys wearing pajamas 
beautiful women running around in uh, negligee. You wear a jockstrap, Adam. Yes. Do you have the? <laughs> he, he saw the question you have the, coming. Like, duct tape the penis to the inner thigh or something. I mean, aren't there guys walking around with tents coming out of their pants? Well, let's put it this way: if that's where you're looking. I think that you oh, probably yeah. have a problem with the party. You're going to have but, a dull night. Yeah, yeah, but once... All right. But you, you get uh, you get some of these NBA stars over to the mansion. They're eight <laughs> feet tall. You walk... You know, Artie Johnson gets poked in the eye. <laughs> I don't know who the hell. Have Do you have a, like, a guest list of people, uh, you know, celebrities from the 60s, from, from the uh, 70s? You know, I mean... The names that have come through that mansion that have uh, attended the parties over the years, some in different stages of their careers. I mean, think about how interesting that is. A guy who was on top doing a TV show of the 70s, yeah. careers going great. You've never heard his name because that was his one good year. Gabe Kaplan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe Kamplin or uh, Yakov Smirnoff or something came by in 78, 79. Or uh, conversely, other guys who were sort of on the way up turned out turned out to go uh, through the roof. I mean, are there any names of uh, any guys? And what's like been the most consistent guest over the years? Is it like a, a James Caan or is it someone <laughs> I knew that was coming. someone like that? I mean, who who are who is that short list of guys who have been attending for 20 years? Well, I, I, in terms of friends over many, many years, sure, it would be Tony Curtis and, and Jimmy Kahn and uh, Robert Culp and, you know, a lot of, uh, I think, friendship is part of what my life has been all about. And there was, uh, mine was the house when I was a kid where the kids came to play, right. and that is still true today. Oh, man, that is uh, very eloquent. Very eloquent. Well, I'm going to that party. I am. I'm wearing my uh, PJs, and I'm doing some playing. Drew, we're making out in the grotto. I don't care what your date? wife says. The <laughs> date to make out. <laughs> that, that's right. You made fun of somebody this, this evening for that. I'm going to practice. That's right. <laughs> Carly? Yeah? You're 23. Yeah. Um, good evening. Hey. Hey. Um, okay. I'm really nervous. I've never speak to anybody famous before. Um, basically, I've been having... Um, I always suffered from nightmares, but um, uh, it's gotten worse, and I, I, it's really weird, but I dream of the devil, and he's tr he hurts me, and he, and he kills me, and he goes after my family, and every time I try to... Is there always in dreams, you don't believe this sort of thing is happening when you're awake? Um, I'm not religious, really religious or anything. I believe in God. Do you see things or hear things when you're awake? Um, no. Yeah. Nope. So is a reoccurring thing about the devil? It's not, it's not, I don't have the same dream every day, but I do have these dreams every day. Do you have, do you get up and... Hold, hold on a second. You don't dream the same thing every day, but you have this dream every day? I don't dream the same dream every day, but... Same theme every day. Exactly, the same, the same theme. Um, it, do you scream out in your sleep? Do you yell in your sleep or anything like that? Do you sit up yeah, and scream? I do. I wake up crying. I like, at the, like, um... When, like uh, yesterday, um, in my dream, the devil took my hand, and all of a sudden, the end of the world came. And did I'm you did you have some sort of major trauma in your life when you were growing up? Yeah. What happened? Molested by Satan. What happened? What happened? Right now, I'm a a, a heroin addict. Oh, well, well, well. Um, like basically, um, I I I was, I was a model, singer, actress, and everything, and now all those jobs have been gone. Now I'm living in a one bedroom apartment that I'm sharing with uh, a person I just met. What, what was the major trauma that you were referring to? Um, well, like I said, I'm a heroin addict. I understand. What was the major trauma you went through growing up? Um, so my father committed suicide. Was that? Did you witness that? Uh, no, um, but my father was basically all I really had. Where's your mother? Uh, my family doesn't speak to me anymore because... Of and where was your mother? Where was my mother? Mom, uh, my father actually was in California. My mother was, they were in Michigan. But how, how is it? She's, she's not tracking. Uh, listen, you didn't have contact with your mother growing up? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, I lived with my mother. Oh, I'm okay. sorry to understand. Okay, and you didn't get along well with your mother? Oh, no, we got along great, oh. but because of this, because her, her big honor roll student turned drug addict, she doesn't want anything to do with me. Dad was an alcoholic? Nope. Mom? No. Oh, Carly. someone did something. Come, Come on. on. No, seriously. The only thing my like my father, he was addicted to painkillers. Okay, uh, all right. Well, that's the same thing. <laughs> when Drew, I got to make it clear. When Drew says alcoholic, he doesn't mean 
necessarily consuming alcohol, but he means that the person has the, the bi- gene. Yeah. biological predisposition to and, and be hooked on a substance. And but, that puts them on risk for opiates and pot and everything else. So. Yeah, but you got to understand, though, when I was little, I, he, I mean, he just did, you know, he took his painkillers, I mean, his Demerol and stuff, but when I was little, I didn't know what that was. I just... Yeah, but you got the gene. And it doesn't ma- you A, you inherited the gene, and that's what sets you up. B, you model the behavior. And C, having an appar- a parent that is detached because they are on drugs is an abandonment. They are completely unavailable to you in the emotional way that children need in order to nurture their growth and development. Trust me. So, yeah, I know. I mean, I yeah. just... All right. All right. All right. So, listen, so. Carly, you got to get off the heroin, and then we can worry about yeah, the you weaning you away from the devil. Do they have a 12-step plan for the uh, for Satan, Drew? Strangely, he, he will probably will vanish if she gets off the heroin. Uh, in, in, Carly, you've you got to go somewhere and get treated. That's it. There, there's no two ways about this. Yeah, just... One yep. More. There you go. That's it. You have to deal with this. You have a you have a fatal disease. It needs to be treated. That I do understand. I just wanted to ask one question. Is that okay? Uh-huh. Um, for Hugh, um, whose idea was it to have Dar- Darva Conger, you know, to want on Darva Conger on that magazine? Who? Darva Conger. Who's Darva Conger? Oh, oh, Darva. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, well, I think that. Uh, 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 there are many roads to celebrity these days, and I think that uh, that's one of the curious ones. And there is, uh, I think that she has expressed some interest in being a Playboy. I think we're talking to her. Oh. All right. Hey, Carly. Please get treatment. You've got to go. Yeah, don't worry about other stuff other than you getting off heroin, all right? Well, trust me, I'm either going to jail tomorrow or I'm going... All right. Well, that would be good for you, quite frankly. Oh, thank you. Well, No, jail, jail could save your life. I was Scott uh, Weiland, who I was ran the other day, uh, that saved his Stone life. Stone Temple Pilot. Yeah. Hey, listen, I have a friend who was uh, uh, going crazy on crack, and uh, he went to jail for uh, eight months or whatever. It saved his life. It really did. I mean, I, that's the only part about uh, putting uh, <laughs> drug addicts in prison that I like. I mean, I, I don't believe that you should be put in prison for doing drugs, but on the other hand, there's people out there. It saves their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're uh, they're a- absolutely out of control. Hef, do you have a, a son, by the way? I don't hear about your daughter, but do you have a son? I have a, a son from my first marriage and, and two boys from uh, my more recent marriage. Wow. With oh, yeah, well, of yep. course. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. mm-hmm. Oh, those mm-hmm. bastards. <laughs> do you need a fourth? Do you, do you... <laughs> <laughs> Not a full-time thing. But I, just... I understand. <clears throat> You're looking for a little adoption here? Well, listen, here's, here's the, the deal. I know we're running late for commercial break, but I'm a good carpenter, and I know uh-huh. you live in a big spread, uh-huh. and they're probably sticking it to you with these guys working <laughs> on it, doing shoddy work, skimming off the top. I'd uh-huh. give it all up. I'd move into uh, uh-huh. one of the smaller rooms. Maybe not uh-huh. your room at first. Just <laughs> I appreciate one that. One of the smaller rooms. I mean, one of the cottages <laughs> out back uh-huh. with uh, one of the pinball machines in it. Uh-huh. Uh, shack up there and just become like the maintenance guy. Uh-huh. I'd give it all up. I, I really would, Drew. Wouldn't that be great? Hey, I, I know you're serious, too. I, yeah. you're <laughs> goddamn <laughs> right I'm serious. It'd be the greatest life ever. I'd, I'd laugh like a hyena every morning when I woke up. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll uh, just take ourselves a break. But could you picture me, Drew? Bronze uh, muscles uh, rippling from no. my. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, hairy, uh, yeah. pasty, and white. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. With a, a tool, but a tool uh, thing off your waist. Chasing and you, a peacock, and you're, you're, trying to rape it. Your butt crack. That's hanging right. There, yeah. That's right. And picking up the uh, playmates with low self-esteem. <laughs> That'd be me. That'd be the go-to guy for them. All right, we're going to uh, take ourselves uh, a little break. We'll be back with uh, Mandy and Sandy, and of course, uh, Hef after this. Back once again with the Love Line. Love Line. The Van Crow and Dr. Drew will be right back before you know it. Well, here we are. A little more uh, love line to go. Manny and Sandy are our guests tonight. They are the Bentley Twins. You can find them one week from today on their website, www.bentleytwins.com and .net. Also find them in the uh, May edition, edition, I should say, of uh, Playboy. And on the cover. They'll be the uh, two blondes that uh, look the same. 
or alike, and uh, that's because they're twins. And as we know, the best-looking chicks are in May because uh, that's my birthday, and uh, that has uh, uh, that is uh, there's some relevance. And as a matter of fact, just to make sure that uh, a tradition, that rich tradition of the best-looking women being in May stays uh, stays alive, half I'd like to uh, come by. <laughs> now I know you don't pick the girls <laughs> out in May. I'd probably swing by what March, February. Whatever. And I know that <laughs> Half does not have an office because I've seen editions of uh, Playboy where they showed uh, the process. He uh, spreads out on that big round bed of his in his PJs. Ironically enough, he wears uh, he wears uh, bib overalls and boots when he sleeps. <laughs> That's what people don't know about Half. He, yeah. he wears the PJs when he's out and about, but mm -hmm. when he sleeps, he sleeps in uh, waders and a straw hat <laughs> <laughs> and a flannel shirt. Uh, and he spreads himself out on this big round bed, and uh, he gets his jeweler's loop out, the one I use to find my penis, uh, Drew, same, <laughs> same one, yeah, device. Same one. And uh, he looks at the, the slides of all the uh, potential uh, playmates. I would like, uh, like I said, now how much lead time do you need? Like, uh, like when you're looking at uh, potential playmates tomorrow, what issue or you know, what month would you be looking at? Well, we can be working as as much as six months ahead, but six but, months. Uh, th but it, you know, we usually have about three issues in the works at the same time. Right. So uh, you're, uh, I'm reading between the lines. You're saying I may have to come by November, December, to uh, pick out my May playmate, or help you make that selection process. Probably yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Uh, so clear your calendar, Adam. Yeah, I'll clear my uh, calendar okay. in uh, uh -huh. November, <laughs> and I'll come by. All right. All right. Let's go to... Bed. Should I bring some beer or something, or are you guys pretty well stocked? <laughs> pretty well stocked. <laughs> yeah. You got a fridge, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All righty, then. Well, they usually bring a cooler, but if you got... Uh, <laughs> we actually have You got power fridge. running to the yeah. uh, mansion now? Uh-huh. Oh, you got yeah. a fridge. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Good enough. Uh, I'll just bring some snacks, something mm -hmm. like that. Something Whatever. To, yeah. Let's get right. two calls a second. Uh, right. <laughs> Daniel. Yeah. You're right. 17. What's up? Well, I got a problem. No, mm -hmm. I think I got a problem. Yeah. It seems like I can't sleep unless I masturbate. All righty then. I hypothetically have that problem too, although I've but never, never actually, tested it. Never actually okay. tested it. <laughs> nope. Always masturbate before I go to bed, so uh, I don't know what would happen if I didn't, but I'd imagine I wouldn't sleep. All right, Daniel. There you go, Daniel. All right. Yeah. I got another question. Now, yeah. yeah. Um, my best friend for like four years. She's always been there, you know, to talk to and things like that, and I just... All right. Okay. Masturbate before you go to bed. <sighs> Deborah. Yes. You're 25. Yes, I am. Uh, you know what I love the rule of radio, which is the more you want somebody to spit out their question, the, the slower, slower they, they go. get. Yeah. Yes. All right, Deborah, real quick. Hi. A uh, girlfriend of mine and her husband had watched a show that um, they had seen where they removed a skull from a person that had smoked a marijuana excessively and there was resin on the brain well it's not it's not resin they don't know what it is but if you look at electron micrographs of people who are smoking a lot about the, the cell uh, membrane of, of the neurons actually have this this layer of some substance and no one has identified exactly what it is yeah and it's what contributes obviously to the dysfunction of the brain right, associated it, with using this yeah, listen, if you ate uh, 10 abba zabba bars every day they'd find peanut butter on your brain if mm. you did it for 30 yeah, years yeah no this is a very strange All right. I, I know chemical but, matrix uh, that appears. I'm, I'm fine with that it, I asked you a question right to that yeah um with um lately i've been having like a numbness on the top of my head and shooting pains up the back of my skull yeah and I thought maybe, uh, my sister said it could be a pinched nerve. But yep, yep. Do you have right. anything to do with that? With pot? Yes. Yes, you're mm. growing a bong inside your skull. No, it, it, it sounds more like a neck problem. Sure. That's and, what I love. It, listen, everybody, this is the danger of getting high and watching the Discovery Channel. Paranoid. You think, every, Paranoid, you think all this stuff is you. You're 25 years old, you smoked a joint and a half in your life, and you figure that headache must be, uh, must be resins growing on your frontal lobe. All right, we're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. I want to apologize to a uh, half for the stupidity of our callers. <laughs> I'm going to uh, kiss his ass just a little more because we got the compilation show to shoot from the mansion. It's great PR, by the way, half. And uh, we'll be back after this. Let's have some more fun. Okay, let's do it. Call Love Line 1 800 Love 191. Love Line, we'll be right back. Well, here's how it's sampled.
Well, that's it. A uh, another show uh, in the uh, in the ground. Irma, if you're going to find some way out of here besides that door, <clears throat> Adam's not letting you go. <laughs> no, I'll just uh, strap myself to the uh, hood of the car right, like okay. a deer that's that what you uh, said, have right. shot. Right. And, uh, <laughs> back, in the trunk. Back to the mansion. All right, uh, I want to thank uh, Hugh Hefner, or as I call him now, uh, Hef, for uh, showing up and uh, bringing the beautiful uh, Mandy and Sandy, the Bentley twins. It was uh, it was uh, an honor to uh, spend time with you, Hef, and uh, and a uh, a surprise. I didn't uh, know you were going to be in here, and of course, uh, uh oh, all go. right. I would love to give the uh, website out one more time, and again, it will not be up for one week. www.bentley twins.com and dot net and uh, look for them on the cover of the uh, May Playboy edition. Thank you very much, uh, ladies Thank and uh, gent. And until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. <laughs> well now. This has been Loveline. The stuff expressed on Loveline is not necessarily the stuff of the staff, management, sponsors, or anyone else, including Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins and Gold. Now, please enjoy these birds.